everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make a polymer clay covered pen. And what you're going to need today is some sort of pen that you can take out the ink. I'm going to pull that out of there. I use pliers to get it out of there, out of the pen. You need something to roll with and something to cut the clay with. This is just a blade. And I use this uh, to flatten the clay, but you don't have to do that. You could just use the rolling pin. And you'll need some clay, of course. And I'm going to show you how to use a clay machine like this. It's also referred to as a pasta machine. Um, but you don't have to use this, so I'm going to show you how to do it in both ways. Another thing you'll need is some kind of work surface. Here I have, this is a cutting mat from the dollar store. And I just used some duct tape to tape it to the table so it won't move around. So here you'll notice that I have some tape left over. I like to tape it to the table as well and um, so that it won't move when I'm trying to turn it around and um, do the clay. The first thing we'll do is just take out the ink. So you'll take your pliers and right at the edge, right before it gets to the gray part here, going to just twist it a little bit. You don't want to break the ink cartridge. So it's coming out just slowly here and then I can pull it out like that. And then I'm going to cover this whole thing and then I'm going to bake this. Next I'm going to get some clay ready and I'm just going to take some pieces here just pick some different colors. I like to pick um, some medium colors, but definitely a dark color and a light color. And white and black are very good for that. Um, I am going to do some of this. Poppy seed is the color of this one. I really like this one when I'm doing marbleized um, clay because this one doesn't smear as much. Uh, the regular black, which... I mean, they look the same, but um, when you start twisting them, this one for some reason turns brown, and I really don't like how that happens. Let's see, I'll add some white to this. Actually, I'm going to add pearl. I like this much better than white because it gives this glitter, um, a little bit of glitter to it. So Next, we're going to condition the clay. And you always start with the lightest color, and you're going to just squeeze it, and um, you can also roll it, especially if it's really hard. You're going to roll, want to roll it. I got some red in there. You could take that out if you don't want that in there. And you can hold it up and then roll it again until it becomes a little bit easier to push with your fingers. So you just keep going until it gets a little bit more easier to work with. And you can tell that it's not really that, you can tell it's not conditioned yet if you can, if you bend it and it starts breaking that means you're going to want to start, you, you're going to want to keep conditioning it. Another thing you can do, get my pe uh, pasta machine over here. Um, so, another thing you can do is put it in the clay machine or pasta machine, whatever you want to call it. And you're just going to go around until it comes out. And actually, I have it on a very thin setting right now I just realized so let's move that I have this little dial on the end here 
And I am going to go to the highest setting I can there. And now it's going to be a lot thicker. And that's usually the setting I use when I'm doing my pens. I don't want it too thin because you don't want it to break. But you don't want it too thick to be a really big pen. And this really helps condition it as well as just putting it through, um, just using your fingers. And I think this one is good. So what I'm going to do is kind of roll it into a little snake like this. And I'll make all of these into snakes and then put them together. So I'll just keep conditioning them. I wanted to give you another way to condition your clay is just to roll it in your hands. And because the whole thing you want to do is warm it up and in your hands it'll really warm up the clay. This this pink one is just really hard right now. I don't know why. And the reason why you want to start from lightest to dark is because once you get to the dark ones, both the color will get onto your fingers. And you don't want to get that color into like the white, for example, because then your white will get tinted. And um, I had red and white on a pen. And I actually, I went light to dark, but when I was putting the colors together to make the marbleized look, the white got pink because of the red that I was using. So it also depends on what color clay you're using, because some of them tend to give off their color, unlike other ones. So now that I'm done with these four colors, what I want to do is put them together. And you don't want these snakes too thin because you do want big chunks of color once you cut open what we're going to make. And so you want to keep them a little fatter. Maybe I did it too thin right now, <clears throat> but that's okay. So. What I did was put the snakes together so that I can see all the colors. So if you had more than four colors, just make it so that you can see all of them. And what you're going to do is start twisting. And again, I'm trying to make sure that I can see every color. Sometimes like I'm starting to lose that white right there. So maybe you would twist it in a different way or something. And you can tell my pink is not conditioned very well because it is starting to break right there. But that's okay, we're going to roll it out so it'll be okay. So once you twist it, roll it out so that it becomes smooth. And it really is okay, whatever you do to get that twisted. If you want it more twisted, you can twist like this. But what we're going to do is fold in half and then twist again. And again, you want to just make sure you can see all the colors. I'm losing some white, so I really could add some more white to this right now, but I think it'll be fine. I'm probably going to take the inside anyways, and I'll show you what that means in just a moment. At this point, we can start pushing together, and I'm going to start trying to make a ball out of this. just trying to roll it up until it becomes a ball and so now is when you would decide that if you want the outside or the inside so you can tell right here what the outside looks like and you would I really like this clear thing because I can just push it down and kind of see what my what the clay will look like if I wanted the outside, I would just roll this out now um, until it's flat. But I'm actually going to try taking the inside and we'll see what that looks like. And now I'm just trying to make it kind of into a cube. Okay. 
now that I have a cube, what I'm going to do is cut slices from here. You can see what the inside looks like. I'm just going to try to make the same size. It doesn't have to be though. You can see each one will become something different. And if we t twisted more, these little blotches of color would have been much smaller. So just be aware of that. Don't twist too much if you want bigger blotches of color. Now what you could do right now is put this directly on here. So I cut these a little fat and so I don't think I want to do, I don't think I want to put these on here directly, but you could do that. So let me show you how you would do that. This one just has to be, it's too thick to be put onto a pen. So you would just stick them on here. If you notice that you're pushing here and you feel that little air is in there, you can take a pin and just poke it and um, push out the air. But then I'm going to take another one and just put it on the pen again and go around and kind of just push it into the clay that was already there. And I can move around clay a little bit. What's really nice about this is that it's so random that it doesn't matter how you put the clay on here. And so you just continue like this, going around, putting some more on there. I'll show you another way to do it. So you would put these down here and I'm going to just kind of overlap them a little bit overlap this one a little bit and then this last one onto overlap this one and on this side and I want this side to be what I'm going to put on the pen so I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to smear all of these sides together to make sure that they stick together. I'm just going to push push the clay into it into itself to make sure that it's really secure. Just like that. And so this is the side I don't like, so it doesn't matter if I get it all smeared. For this side, I'm just going to roll it out. And you can roll it out this way, make them long lines, or you can roll it out this way too. Now at this point I can put it onto my pen. You could also use this to make sure it's even. You don't have to though. This is totally optional. And so that that barely did anything to it. It just made it a little bit longer, actually. So now you can just go on here, just lay it on the pen. And then now I'm just kind of rolling it onto the clay, but I don't uh, want to get any air bubbles. So just make sure to push it against the pen, making sure there's no air bubbles. And now I'm going to cut this off and I'm just going to go right next to the pen. And now I have a little bit of a space here, so I'm just going to push that into the rest of the clay. And this part here, you can't really tell that there's a gap, but you still want to make sure to push that in there a little bit without smearing. Try not to smear, but it'll happen, so it's okay. And then once you're done with that, we have to do this top little bit. You can just take a little extra from there and just put it around here. And I'm just kind of pushing it around there. Now, what you're going to do is you want this to be even. So you're going to just, 
gently roll it. If you roll too hard, it'll start trying to come off and then you'll get a really big air bubble and it's just, that's not fun and then you might have to start over. So just slowly, not too hard. And then what I like to do, just lightly with my finger, is go like this. And it makes it kind of smooth and shiny. Um, and I can feel some of the bumps, so I might kind of just push to make it a little bit more even. And I like doing this because it also gets rid of all the all the thumbprint or fingerprints. Now, on this end here, what I like to do is put my finger on the edge here and kind of roll it until it becomes pointed like that. And then I push a little bit, but right here this is this is just extra clay. So I'll take my blade and I'll just slowly kind of slice it off. And then I have a nice clean top there. Here is my clay oven and it kind of looks like a toaster oven where I put this in here with some cardstock accordion style and my pen is there. And then I set this at about 275 for nine minutes and my oven has to be preheated for about 20 minutes. After you bake it, then you can put this back in. I'll show you what it'll look like, sort of like this, once it's done. Okay, thank you for watching and um, please give it a thumbs up if you like this video or hit subscribe and I'll be sure to make some more videos soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.